Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about the integration we now have with privileged identity management and conditional access. Now, when we think of privileged identity management, the whole goal of this is we don't like high standing privileges. So what privileged identity management lets us do is this just in time elevation to it could be an intro role, formerly Azure AD role, it could be an Azure, so a resource manager role. It could be a group membership. And so based on when I need it, I elevate up and now I get that entry role or that Azure role or that group membership for a finite amount of time. And when I do this elevation, well, I can require certain things. Maybe it's just a justification. So why am I doing this? Maybe there is some approval that has to happen for me to do this. Maybe I have to do a stronger authentication so I require an MFA. So this is what we're used to with privileged identity management. But now what we can do is we can integrate with conditional access. Now the mechanism to do this is we're gonna use an authentication context. Now I've talked about this in other videos when we talked about things like protected actions. So the whole point now is, well, we have these authentication context, which is really nothing more than a label. So I'm gonna go and create these authentication context. If we jump over super quick, I can go and see it in the entry portal. I'm in the protection section. I'm looking at conditional access. And we can see we have this idea of an authentication context. And it really is just a label. I've created two. Now you can have up to 25 in your entry tenant. And because there's 25, I wanna give it some kind of name that's useful to describe what it's gonna require so I can maybe use it in different ways. Because remember, the whole point of the authentication context is I can use it with different things. I can tag applications, I can tag sensitive data, um, such as a SharePoint site, uh, maybe through Defender for Cloud Apps. And now obviously I have this ability to use it with privileged identity management as well. And you can see it really is just a label. It has a name, a description, and hey, publish to apps. There's nothing more to that. So once I've created that authentication context, here's where it gets nice is now I can go and create a conditional access policy. And normally when we create a policy, we target something. We target users, groups, guests, applications, combinations of different things. But this time, what my policy is gonna target is a particular authentication context. So now, if we jump back over, I'll now go and actually look at a conditional access policy. And I created one already. If I was to do a new policy, all we'd really be doing down here is for my target resource, I would be targeting an authentication context, and then I would just select which context it is. So in my case, I've created one already. I'm doing all users. And once again, you could exclude maybe a bypass group, for example, if there were circumstances where, hey, um, I need this not to apply, maybe some special bypass, I could add people into it if really required but then what I'm targeting is a specific authentication context. And then I can set all of the regular conditions. Maybe I would integrate with the sign-in risk so it needs to be a low risk. But then in controls, in this case, I'm requiring it to be the device is marked as compliant. So for example, Intune would be marking that as such. And I'm using a custom authentication strength. So it's not just regular MFA, I'm requiring an authentication strength I have created, which requires a, a phishing resistant or just the authenticator application. So now I've created that specific conditional access that is linked to that particular authentication context. And so now all I have to do 
is when I think about, hey, my privileged identity management, remember we can set these different requirements for it. Well, now I'm gonna set a requirement that, well, hey, great. I'm gonna require an authentication context as that requirement. So now I can just go in, we jump back over, to all of the different types of privileged identity management and use that. So if we go and look at my identity governments and privileged identity management, if we start with entry roles and we look at the roles and I'll just grab, let's say global admin, it really doesn't matter which one I pick and look at the settings and then I edit, you'll now notice when I go and configure, well, what are the requirements I have to actually go and elevate up to this role, we now have this new option of authentication context. So I could select that and that will show me the ones I've created. And in exactly the same way, I could go and select Azure resources. Remember, this can be at a different scope. This could be a management group, a subscription, a resource group. So I have a lot of flexibility here. But now I could go and pick a particular role. Maybe I want to do the contributor. So, hey, we see the regular contributor account down here. And once again, I've got my settings. And once again, I have this option to use an authentication context. And it would be exactly the same if I was using groups. If I've PIM enabled a group, once again, I could do owner or actually, I'll just, it doesn't make any difference, but I'll do member. I have exactly that same option that I can use an authentication context. And that's it. I mean, that's the whole new configuration that I can do, but it's so powerful that now I can think about, hey, it's not just an MFA or just an approval or just a justification. Anything I can do within a conditional access policy that can absorb all those different signals from um, the identity protection for the user risk, the sign-in risk, locations, the device status, device tags, all of those things I can leverage now as part of that policy and now leverage as part of when I wanna do that elevation. That was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.